Hey guys, t -Buller. Today I got a look at the new Tier 6 British battleship, the Nelson. Cunningham on the screen here. You'll know what I do have JoJo. This ship, I believe, I don't know for a fact, but I believe it has the shorter fuse British um, AP shells. So JoJo probably helps out a little bit with this build and getting those shells through. Haven't had a lot of civils against heavily armored battleships on the waterline. You can get the good juicy AP damage though, um, but if you're going to take those salvos, you might want to aim up a bit on the battleships. If you don't know, some of these British battleships have shorter fuses on their AP shells, so when they penetrate the armor, the shells explode quicker. So those make them particularly good against cruisers, not as good against um, well-armored battleships. By the time those shells enter the lower, you know, citadel area they're encountering multiple layers of armor in there so short of fuse will cause them to explode early again i'm not 100 percent sure but it seems to me to be having some penetration issues and that's what i believe the root causes so for that you can shoot this thing he at long range try and switch over to ap when possible if you want to run the commander build that allows you to switch shells quicker that might not be a bad option like the king george you're going to want to actively be switching the shells back and forth Unfortunately, unlike the King George, the Nelson's reload is quite onerous. It's 30 seconds compared to 25 on the King George, um, both using the same commander builds for ease of comparison. Very good HE damage, though, 6,900 compared to 6,100 of the KGV, and 5% higher fire chance at 46. So, like the King George, you can get away with shooting just HE if you want. I tend to find on both ships I do better when I actively switch back and forth, but maybe the two battleships in the game where I wouldn't really get ticked at my team for just shooting HE, those are those these two tier 6 British battleships. Speed-wise, Nelson's very slow. Uh, Colorado, 21 knots, 21.6 on the Nelson. Uh, similar st or sniper build on those. King George... 25.2, so quite a bit slower. You are going to need to keep an eye on your position with this one. Here we do fire an AP salvo at the Normandy. This goes a little bit against what I was saying earlier. You see we get some juicy citadels there. I think the Normandy is a lot less heavily armored in the sides than some of the battleships that you'd be more likely to encounter having trouble penetrating. Again, I'm just going on the feel of the shots I've taken so far with the ship, but I strongly suspect that I am correct when it comes to those shells. Anyways, you you got to kind of play middle. So if you spawn on C like I do, you kind of want to play between C and B. You don't want to abandon your side. You're still responsible for the side you spawn on. But you want to kind of be thinking ahead. Once we clear the side out, if we do, then I need to be kind of moving into position. Now their team is playing on the, both the flanks quite heavily. So, you know, maybe if I'm drifting a little bit more centrally as the battle unfolds, it would be better. But... I'm primarily focused on this. Just keep that in mind, though. The speed is quite slow. Uh, rudder shift a little bit slower, about three seconds slower. Good detection, actually. 14 kilometers, best at the tier, tied with the Lyon. Uh, you could conceivably put a high-level condo on this and play around with that. And take a look at that heel there on the bottom. You'll see a huge chunk of green. That's the potential light uh, damage that you can heal by activating that. Nelson's healed 12,094 on my build. I don't know if that's altered by the commander or not at all, but compare that to 329 on the King George V. So it's considered a super heal. There's only two of them as opposed to three. You do want to keep that in mind. Um, that's assuming you're running Cunningham and not Madden with his extra heals, of course. And you can see we're continuing to get multiple citadels on these cruisers. And like I say, a lot of these shots would be probably over pens or they're much more likely to be over pens with a traditional ap shell these shorter fuse ones though they they will more likely detonate internally on those cruisers so you know cruisers definitely need to be aware of that and that's why flipping back and forth between your shells uh is really important you can hit these cruisers with that he it's going to do some pretty decent damage but you're not going to get the massive damage that you do have potentially with the Nelson's AP rounds, which are quite good. The damage is 13,590 compared to 11,891 on the King George V. So even though the HE shells are very strong on the ship, 
Uh, due to the longer reload, I think the King George is probably a better HE spammer than this one. That's just my early impression, again, which of course this video is. Now, getting into this game here, at this point we've kind of cleared our side. I, due to the speed and because we're up big right now, I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe I should track this Mayoko down, try and get some damage, or maybe I need to go all the way to the west and try and rejoin the battle. Going to the west and leaving the sky alone is the correct play. Ships they are kiting off, meaning they're sailing away from you towards the edge of the map, away from objectives. They're taking themselves out of the game, but how they keep themselves relevant and what makes that potentially a good play is if they draw one, two, three, multiple ships especially, but even one ship. Um, if they draw them away from the objectives in the center of the map, if they draw them away from parts of the map that are actually, def not, you know, defining who's winning and losing the game, that's when that play is effective as a defender. It's also much more, that's kind of the cruiser's advantage is sailing away from battleships. They can spam HE at you, you're a lot easier to hit. They can dodge your shells if you're trying to shoot AP. You may or may not have trouble penning them, you know, depending on where you're aiming exactly. But it's just, it, the advantage goes to them, and of course those Japanese cruisers can fire rearward torpedoes towards you as well, so there's no point in chasing him down. But I was thinking, well, if I'm so removed from here, I might as well try and kill him and get, you know, the extra 20k damage or whatever. But I I make the correct decision. I go over here, and we're not that far removed, but you will see the slow speeds kind of <laughs> making it uh, take a little while to get back into the action. I haven't seen an armor view, but I, the Citadel reminds me of the Vanguard, the pre buffed, buffed, buffed uh, Vanguard, where <laughs> if you were pointing broadside, you were going to get hit. You were going to get hit hard. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to tell exactly how big a Citadel is when I'm shooting at it. I've just been playing this ship today, though, so I haven't had a chance to shoot at this one yet, but be careful. That's not how you want to be <laughs> approaching this ship at all. You need to be angling properly. Angling properly in this uh, means primarily pointing nose in on your targets that can potentially shoot you. I have had one exchange where I was kind of facing rearward, angled away, and then firing my guns towards them. It worked. I didn't take a lot of incoming damage, so I don't know if I'd rely on that. But this ship, you're going to want to be, you know, kind of facing your enemy. Now, unlike the Richelieu, unlike the Jean Bart, or the Dunkirk, you know, you can't just sit in there nose in and you'll have all your guns on you. That third turret is obscured. It sits lower than the second turret. So you can you can see on the diagram there, I'm just, once all those three guns are white, that's how steep we have to be. I'm pretty close to it right now. It's, it's a steep angle you can do. So you can, and the turrets traverse very, very quickly. So you can actually f uh, flip back and forth like a fish in the ship quite successfully. That'll help throw the enemy off or to help dodge torpedoes or whatever. Just, I think to play this though, the Richelieu, the Jean Bard, I think you can I kind of view those as kind of wedge stopper, you know, find a position, drop anchor, and just hold it down until everything in front of you is dead. This one, I think you kind of have to be on the move, but you do want to usually, you know, be facing the enemy. So, kind of going quarter speed, half speed, and maybe three quarter speed. Oscillating between those depending on the situation, but maintaining some sort of um, forward momentum so you can kind of swing back and forth, get that third turret in play when you have the opportunity. So the Nelson for me, I don't, my early impression of it, I don't think it's the easiest ship to play. I think you do have to have a fairly good understanding of mechanics of ships you're shooting at to figure out what kind of shell you want to shoot, uh, understand what parts of the ship you want to be targeting depending on what shell you're shooting at and you know what distance you're at and all that sort of stuff and you know you do need to be angling properly in this if you're a new player this is not probably my top recommend but recommended battleship for someone like that that's been kind of my um, stance on the British battleship line as a whole and I think that's going to be enhanced or exaggerated even more once those cruisers come out their reputation is um, kind of Danae-esque in their fragility, <laughs> but I think they'll be pretty effective in terms of dealing damage. So, 
that said, it is, you know, it's a unique ship. It's a British battleship, which in general I tend to like quite a bit. And it, it's a fun ship to play, so, you know, if you're looking for something new, I think this definitely could fit the bill, especially if you're into battleships. But, again, you just kind of have to know what you're doing, I suppose. <laughs> so anyway, you see we get back in a position here, and we actually... Someone else killed that cruiser. I think it was the Mayoko that was in the corner. But we do have a destroyer on the loose. I don't think it... Well, it's been spotted in the far west, but I think that was a while ago. And I actually kind of expected it to be out there when I was playing this, so we'd go ahead and take a shot. Queen Elizabeth's nose... Uh, the British battleship's nose in general are pretty well armored, but he was angled just enough that it started to kind of flatten out. You know how that front cone, you know, kind of tapers in or whatever it's described as. You know, if they present a flat enough angle, you can punch through there, so it becomes kind of more like you're shooting them into the side. There are the secondaries go off. That's like the alarm clock that you're looking for. Akatsuki's in range here, and we're presuming he's torping. This is what I'm talking about with the traverse and the ability to flip around. This comes in handy here. We are able to zap the Akatsuki, get rid of him, doing our duty here. We don't want to rely on others to kill the destroyers. And... We still have the third gun available to shoot at the Queen Elizabeth. We're able to blast him there. And again, we don't get a citadel shot in there. That could be due to the flat, you know, horizontal angle of the shells going in. I don't know if we just missed it above or the shell detonated before it got into the citadel. I don't know enough about, you know, the armor schemes and how all that stuff works. But there we shoot under the turret, get another nice shot. And you can see the AP damage does great. You just don't necessarily have to shoot for waterline citadels. So that's going to do it for that one, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Questions, comments, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.